Attention, this zone might be too techy for you. Enter at your own risk. Well, hello everyone. Um, I know it's been quite a while since I've made a video. Um, it seems like forever, doesn't it? Uh, what did I do? Did I fall off the face of the earth or something? Well, no. Um, <laughs> I did not. Um, what I've been doing is I have been quite busy with a lot of things. Um, just some family issues that I needed to get taken care of and things like that. So I have been quite busy, but um, videos are going to commence now. Now, uh, I had already made this video earlier, but I didn't like the way it came out. It was way too long. So I'm going to try to keep it as short as I can this time by cutting out a lot of useless crap. So this video is going to be a feature review and um, my personal opinions on OS X Mavericks. And Mavericks is the, is the current release of Mac OS X or OS X uh, for the Mac. Apple um, really didn't do a whole lot in terms of interface change as much as they did under the hood improvements. It was kind of like going from Leopard to Snow Leopard where there was really no major changes just more power uh, improvement features. So let's get started. I want to start off with two of the with the two new apps that Apple incorporated into Mavericks and let's start with the first one. The first one is iBooks. So um, with iBooks you can now have your entire iBooks library from your iOS device on your Mac. As you can see I don't have any. Um, because I don't read, so why should I download anything? Uh, but you can click on the iBook Store, and uh, it kind of has that App Store feel to it. It really looks like the App Store. And um, with it, here you'll be able to view like all the top books and everything. You, of course, search for everything. Chop Charts, the New York Times, category books, or even by top authors. You can also search for authors, search for books. Um, I believe textbooks are also supported on here as well. Uh, and I like this idea because um, the textbooks, I'm sure, are probably not more than probably just a normal book, probably about 20 bucks or so. But um, I hope it really takes off and everybody who creates textbooks puts them up on the App Store, puts them up, excuse me, uh, on the um, uh, iBook Store. Because what is the big thing, as a college-age student, what is the worst thing that we have to go through every single semester? Buying books. And books can be hundreds of dollars. And I know that my last semester, when I was in college, my last semester, I think I paid over $400 worth just on books. And it was like, why? <laughs> but um, iBooks, I'm sure, are going to be much more cheaper. And plus, it's going to be more convenient. It's going to save a heck of a lot of money. And I like it better than carrying around those old textbooks. So having them on your Mac is going to be very, very um, great. Um, I hope maybe Windows comes out with something like this, uh, maybe like an iBook reader or something. So that way, even if that you don't have a, you know, if you don't have like a Mac, you'll still be able to do it that way. But I hope this is something that takes off and everybody jumps on it because it can really save money in the long run and it's much more convenient instead of carrying around those big heavy books all the time. So that is iBooks. The next uh, new uh, feature that Apple put into Mavericks is Maps. Now, we all know the big debacle with Apple Maps when it first was um, when it first uh, when it was first introduced in iOS six. Uh, hence, the reason why Scott Forstall um, has been fired from the company because of that major faux pas. So, um, Maps has gotten way better. Um, they have done a lot of improvements to Maps. As you can see here, it's currently taking our current location, and uh, this blue dot kind of signifies our estimated current location. I'm not going to say if that's true or not, but you can figure that out for yourself. You can judge by yourself if that's true. Uh, so up here on the top, it shows you the, the city you're in and the county. So in this case, we're in Jamestown, New York, and the county is, of course, in Chautauqua, uh, which, yes, that is a Seneca term. Um, I believe it means bag tied in the middle, I believe. Um, don't hold me to that because I really don't know. Uh, but anyway... Um, just as a quick note, off topic, um, it, it really doesn't matter, but um, this house right here actually just burnt down uh, just the other day. Uh, I had a wonderful view of it. <laughs> I really did. The house caught on fire, and uh, the house just burnt down. So this house right here, right here, is no longer there. It is gone with the wind. It's bye-bye. Um, the good news is everybody did get out safely, so that was the good news. Um, 
The cause of the fire was actually determined to be an overheated extension cord because somebody plugged a heater into it. And that is a no-no. You don't plug heaters uh, into extension cords. So that's what caused. So that house right there is gone, gone with the wind. Um, I had a wonderful view of it, let me tell you. It was quite interesting. That was the first major fire I've ever experienced. Uh, it was quite, quite scary. But anyway, on topic here. With maps, of course, we can search for a place. So let's say um, one place I want to go to because it's close to the racetrack, and I'm currently looking in colleges down there, is Daytona Beach. Now, as you notice in my history, it pops right up in my history. So let's go there. Now, it's going to find us on the map. There it is. And I'm going to zoom right in and on, on this for you. And now we're going to start viewing Daytona Beach. My aunt, as a side note, used to live in this part of Daytona Beach here, out here toward the coast. I think this is Daytona Beach Shores, this area right out here. Um, I think that's what it's called, and that's where she lived. She lived in a beachfront condo um, on Daytona Beach. Yeah, she's filthy rich. Um, she's richer than probably I'll ever be. But um, anyway, this is Daytona Beach, and as you can see here, I can, um, you know, view all the things. Yeah, I think this is the bridge that connects Daytona to Daytona Beach Shores, I believe. So you can go right over the Atlantic right there. So this is Daytona Beach. I'd like to live in Daytona Beach, possibly, because it's close to the racetrack. Um, I don't even know where the racetrack is here. Um, I could type it in, and it would show me, probably. But anyway, we're not going to do that. So um, if you live in Florida... Um, give me, uh, please just, uh, give me feedback on the state. Leave me a comment. Do you like it? Do you hate it? What do you like? What don't you like? Because it's a possible, because I might possibly want to live in Florida for the rest of my life. So please give me feedback. Um, I take all feedback as good feedback. Bad, nice, good, whatever it may be. Just please tell me. So, um, so this is maps. Of course, I can do a hybrid view. Oops, I can do a hybrid view here, which tells me street names. I can do a standard, uh, very boring view, or I can go to the satellite mode. It basically just doesn't tell you street names. Um, there is uh, one thing here that I can do is I can click on this directions button, and it's going to map out directions for me over here. So um, I'm going to click the directions button, and it's going to give me directions from my current location to, um, to Daytona Beach. So in this case, by taking the... Uh, suggested route, which has toll boost, which I hate, 17 hours and 27 minutes currently to get down there. There's alternate routes to take as well. So from Jamestown to Daytona Beach, it'd take about 17 hours, give or take. Also, if you had an iPhone, I believe, running iOS 7, you can, of course, send uh, directions to your phone. And when you unlock your phone, it takes you into the navigation. So that's really cool. I can't show you that because my iPhone um, is a 3G. Yes, I am that old. <laughs> I don't really use my phone that much, so I don't see the need to upgrade. Um, now, I, I want to show you something really cool that Apple incorporated, and I want to show you... Oops, spell it right. New York. New York. I want to show you flyover data, because this is really cool. So I'm going to, um, as you can see, it already took us into flyover mode here. I'm just going to get out of that just for a second. And I'm going to zoom in on New York here, get in a hybrid view. And I'm going to turn off my mouse here so I can show you this. Because I have it set to where the trackpad turns off when the mouse is on. So anyway, I'm going to just zoom in. But anyway, I'm going to get into flyover mode here. And as you can see, look at this. Beautiful flyover data. Look at this. I'm just going to zoom right in on this. Look at this. Yeah, it kind of looks like we're in a scummy area, actually. <laughs> I don't even know where we are. Um, I've never been to New York City, actually. Um, I never have, even though I live about 300 miles from it. So, ooh, that's never good to see. Um, so I don't know where in the hell we are here. But anyway, look at this. Beautiful flyover data, and of course I can just pan around like that. We're in the meatpacking district of New York. Okay. Whatever that means. Uh, <laughs> so here we are. And of course, a, a good thing to show you that is the Statue. Of course it comes right up, so I'm just going to click it. It's going to take us to the Statue of Liberty, and I'm going to zoom in. Get rid of that. And where is the statue? It's, aha, here it is. 
and there she is and I'm going to get into flyover look at this isn't this beautiful there she is the Statue of Liberty and all her glory I can just okay so there you go beautiful flyover data and that is maps now um, those are the two new apps that Apple incorporated into um, Mavericks now the rest of it is mostly just under the hood improvements and some other cool things one other feature Apple did add and this is something I will never use uh, and that is this over here called tags now I don't use tags but uh, tags comes over from iOS and uh, you can assign things by color or whatever you can create a new tag just like this I think it's quite useless I will never use it personally um, also in the finder Apple also added tabbed browsing so all I do is I go up to finder new tab and I can create and I can just click the plus button and create many tabs as I want and of course I can now take finder full screen why would you want the finder full screen but I guess if you do then it will work good for you so I'm gonna click on applications Oops, applications here and on this one I'm gonna open up my um, my pictures folder uh, let's get rid of this get rid of the, well let's open up um, desktop so here I have all these different tabs open and I can hover content across the tabs things like that so kind of cool tab browsing is really cool and so that is uh, finder tabs and it actually comes in really nice handy I find this is probably one of the most used features I use because it's really nice instead of having all those windows open you can just um, have them all in tabs so um, there's some finder improvements there also some minor improvements people won't notice if I open up launchpad and I click on a folder um, Mountain Lion, if you were to open up a folder in um, Launchpad, it would be all black. Well, now it's actually transparent, so they've actually fixed that so where it's nice and transparent. Um, also with the dock, here, I'm going to move the dock to the side. And you notice, in the past, it would turn to a black dock with a white outline. Well, now, it kind of looks like the iOS 7 dock, doesn't it? Because there's rumors saying that Apple's going to give OS 10 a refresh and it's going to look like iOS 7. So, uh, But this dock really does mimic the iOS 7 dock, if you think about it. Well, it also can be compared to the OS 10 Tiger dock, um, the old look before Leopard, where the dock was kind of gray. It, it, it kind of resembles the old dock uh, before it went 3D, plus the iOS 7 dock. But also speaking on the top of interface, uh, this has got a little bit of a new interface on it and of course something new in Mountain Lion in Mavericks is you'll now be able to send iMessages straight through Notification Center so now we have iMessages Twitter and Facebook same as before um, there is one new feature that I really like which is called multiple displays now of course we can always connect multiple displays up to our Macs but Apple's made it a lot easier I actually made a video on this uh, a few months back uh, I'm, I'm not going to actually upload that video but I'm going to put in a snippet of that video to show you the new multiple display support in Mavericks right here and so now uh, just like in the past I could always take this full screen by hitting the full screen button but in the past when you would take a window full screen on one display what would happen is all the other displays that you had connected to your machine they would go nothing but a gray screen and you couldn't have two different uh, full screen apps up on all your so that way you couldn't have multiple full screen apps on on two or three different displays and it was really annoying and now with Mavericks they finally have fixed that issue and that's the way it should have been um, so now I'm going to take Keynote full screen and here as you notice I'm here at my desktop on the uh, external display and I'm going to take Keynote full screen so now I'm working in Keynote full screen. You see the menu bar is gone, the dock is gone, the dock is gone. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say there. And as you can see here, I still have this desktop up here on the second display. So now what I'm going to do is another cool thing with Mavericks is I can click over here and I can finally get at my menu bar across all the different displays. And if I go down here, I can also summon the dock. So over here on this display, I'm going to open up um, a new feature in Mavericks called iBook and here we are at the iBook store so now if I was reading a book let's just say I'm gonna take this full screen as well hit the full screen button and it goes full screen 
and the flying toasters are now playing over here on the iBook. Um, so what we have now is two different full screen apps working on multiple displays. So I Okay, so if you're still with me, uh, that is the new multiple display support in Mavericks. It's really cool now. Um, that's pretty much, uh, and of course there's all these under the hood improvements like um, AppNap, which like, take for example, I'm going to open up Safari, which Safari did receive a new look, and I'll show you that in just a minute. I'm going to open up Safari here, and I'm going to open up iBooks, and I'm going to completely cover the um, Safari window. Now, the way AppNap is supposed to work is it's going to um, apply power to the things that you see. So, according to theory, right now, more power is being directed to iBooks than Safari right now because I'm looking at iBooks. But if I move iBooks to the side, Safari will be brought back back up to power, and then when I move iBooks over it, the power is supposed to go back down. That's the way it's supposed to work. Um, that is um, AppNap. Just because Apple says it works does not mean it does work, so I don't know. But uh, I'm going to show you the new Top Sites page. It did get a refresh. As you can see, it's more flat than it is more 3D. We have all of our Top Sites here. Um, and of course, I can just click to one, and it will take us uh, straight there. And of course, I can just go back, just like that. Um, go to another website, bing, bang, boom, just like that. And oops, and I can just go back, just like that. So um, that is Safari. Uh, some speed improvements, but nothing really too major to where it can be documented. And of course, there's a whole list of features, as you see right here, that I'm listing. Um, so all these features are supposed to improve the speed uh, of Mavericks and make it much more responsive. And that it is. I've noticed that Mavericks is a bit more snappier. Um, but one thing I want to show you that's really odd, and I don't quite understand this. I'm going to go to About This Mac, and I'm going to click on More Info to open up the System Profiler. Now, right here, here's my graphics card, a Intel HD Graphics 4000. These Macs originally shipped with 512 megs of video memory. According to Mavericks, it's now at 1024 megabytes, just a little shy of one gigabyte. I was told that the reason this doubled is because of uh, the way Mavericks now handles graphics. Uh, but I'm not entirely sure if that's the reason. But I did notice that my graphics memory did double um, when I upgraded to Mavericks. That's kind of an interesting feature that I thought I'd show because probably not many people actually know about that. So um, as you can see, all these list of improvements here are supposed to improve speed and performance uh, of Mavericks, and it is a bit more snappier than Mountain Lion. Uh, some things are actually a bit more quicker. Um, Apple did also for Mavericks update the entire iWork and iLife suite. Um, iLife, which is iPhoto, uh, iMovie, and GarageBand received major updates. Um, as you can see, their logos are a bit different. This is the new iPhoto icon. This is the new iMovie icon, and GarageBand really did not receive an update at all in terms of the icon. iPhoto did not receive any drastic uh, look um, change. It, it, it still looks the same, but they just gave it a new icon. iMovie was totally... Um, it wasn't rewritten. They just gave it a new interface, like what they did going from iMovie HD to iMovie OA. Uh, GarageBand received also a major update. It looks like Logic Pro. Um, if you have the new version of Logic Pro, which is Logic 10, it looks fairly similar. And I actually did buy the new version of Logic to upgrade from Logic 9. If I knew Apple was going to do this with GarageBand to make it look almost identical, I would have never spent the money and upgraded. Uh, Apple has removed podcasting from GarageBand, which has been a big uproar as podcasting is no longer available. And the new version of GarageBand I consider to be Logic Express, if any of you guys... Um, actually know that application. It was a cheaper version of Logic Pro aimed at prosumers. Kind of figure the new version of GarageBand to be the to be the successor to Logic Express. I mean they're deviously similar. And of course iWork which is uh, Keynote. Of course they gave them new icons. You see Keynote numbers and pages. Um, I like the new uh, interface that they gave these. They're a little bit more better. Um, of course Apple kind of took out features from iWork 09 and they have uh, just recently, just yesterday, uh, uh, um, all three uh, iWork uh, apps were updated with uh, features that they took out. Um, Apple is committing to um, bring back those features to software updates 
for keynote numbers and pages. Um, during the upcoming months, they're going to continue software updates that uh, reinstate those features. So, um, you know, you bitch loud enough, then uh, Apple will hear you. So um, that's pretty much all I have for you. Um, oh, yeah, one other thing, one more thing, like Steve Jobs. Um, Calendar did receive an update. So as you can see, it's got a new interface on it. It's just a lot cleaner than what it was. Um, no more of that stitching, nothing, you know, it's just much more simpler. Um, and of course, I can view my calendar by the day, by the week, by the month, or by the year. Um, quite simple. And of course, this can also be taken full screen as well. So, um, Calendar did receive an update as well. Um, iCloud Keychain, um, which is something that I really can't show you, but. Um, iCloud Keychain kind of stores all your passwords across all your devices, so that's really cool. Um, all your credit cards and stuff are basically remembered, so you don't have to enter those in. Uh, really cool stuff. Um, not a whole lot to show you on the feature side, just more under the hood improvements uh, Apple uh, incorporated into uh, Mavericks, and it is a bit more quicker and snappier than what uh, Mountain Lion was. So all in all, a very good update. Um, if you haven't updated to Mavericks, I highly suggest you do. It's free, and that's something else that Apple has also done with Mavericks. They're making all versions of OS X from now on free. Um, not entirely sure what the idea behind that was, but I had my 20 bucks ready <laughs> because I figured it was going to be 20 bucks. Um, but um, you know, Apple decided to make it free, so that's a double yay yay. So uh, that's pretty much all I have for you. Um, I will probably do. Um, I'll probably show you the new um, versions of iWork and iLife uh, probably in later videos. I'm not sure if I'm going to do that. But um, if you guys would like to see um, the new versions of iWork and uh, iLife, leave a comment saying that you want to. And if I get a good enough request, then uh, maybe I will in a later video. So more videos to come. I've been quite busy lately. Again, family issues. Plus, my MacBook Pro had a hard drive failure just a couple of weeks ago but I fixed that. Um, I bought a nice hybrid drive for it, which is a solid state drive and a hard drive all in one. Um, and the machine is much quicker than what it was with the hard drive in it. Not sure what caused the hard drive to fail. Um, I think at the moment, I think it was data corruption, but um, I'm not entirely sure what the problem was. I haven't been able to diagnose what caused it to fail, but um, it did. But luckily, because I use Time Machine and my external drive sitting right here on my desk, um, because I back up to Time Machine, I did not lose anything, so all I had to do was just go into Time Machine and then restore everything uh, from my Time Machine drive. So if that's so, if you don't use Time Machine, now is a good reason to start, because I could have lost almost, I think I have almost 200 gigabytes worth of stuff in my computer, and I could have lost it all if I didn't back up. So thank God for Time Machine. Okay, so I'm going to end this video here. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, leave comments, all that stuff. More videos are to come. I'm not going away, guys. I promise you, I won't leave you for this long. Again, I hope, unless everything stays good and I don't run into any more problems with family or anything. But, uh, yeah, that was the main reason why I haven't been making videos. A lot of family issues going on that I had to resolve and other stuff. But uh, I'm back, baby! So, double pistols. Okay, I'm going to end this video. Take care, guys. Have a wonderful night. Okay, I forgot to mention two features. Um, and I want to show you those couple of features right now. Uh, I want to go back into uh, Safari, and I want to show you, along with the new top sites, we also have this new um, bookmarks bar right here with this thing called reading list. Now, I click on this by mistake because it just seems to be in the way, um, so I just never worry about that. But this shared links thing is really cool, uh, and that is right here. It views my Twitter feed and shows me all the links the people that I'm following have shared. So in this case, here is, uh, let's just click on one, here's my local uh, news, new description released to two men posing as Erie County Water Authority workers uh, coming out of Buffalo. Click the link, and it takes us straight to the link. And as you notice at the top of the page, it says it was retweeted by uh, News 4 Buffalo, and blah, 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 it takes us right to the site to where we can, um, oops, I don't know how that happened, but anyway, click on it, it takes us right to the link, and I can do this for all the links. So in this case here, the gadget flow, click on this, and it will take us to uh, the link that they're showing. So that's a cool thing. It's called shared links. Um, I believe it works with also LinkedIn, I believe. 
I don't have one of those, but if you have a LinkedIn, that'll work also with it too. And something new Apple incorporated is push notifications. Now, for some reason, it seems to not want to work. Uh, I have it turned on in System Preferences, and I'm signed up for a couple, but they don't seem to work. Uh, I, I think they only worked like the first three days, and then they stopped working. That's a notification for Facebook, never mind that. But um, the push notifications are for sites like CNN has one, Mac Rumors has one. Um, I think the PGA Tour site I think has one because I think I saw one for that. I think, but I'm not entirely sure. But it's supposed to have a push notification come down, but it never seems to work. I think it only worked like the first three days after I installed Mavericks, and then after that it quit working. So I don't understand what happened there. But um, one thing that Apple did is no longer in having big intrusive alerts on the screen, they're now push notifications. So I have my Time Machine backup drive connected, and I'm just going to unplug it. I'm not going to eject it, and watch what happens. It comes up as a push notification saying that the disk was not ejected properly, and blah, 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 blah. This also happens with uh, the low battery warning. So now instead of having a big intrusive alert in the middle of the screen, it comes up as a push notification. I'll just close that, and I'll just plug my drive back in. So... Those are, so those are a couple of new things that, um, just a few features that I forgot to mention that I thought I should mention that are in Maverick. So, there we go. Now I think I'm done with this video.